Hey everyone, uh, my name is Tim Wright. This is the Western School of Initiatic Gnosis and Theosophical Mysteries. Welcome to the first video on a series which is titled Elu Cohen, The Reintegration of the Mind. Um, as many of you may know, this has been a 20 year long obsession and fixation for me. I first heard about the Elu Cohen in a series of monographs from the International College of Esoteric Studies uh, on Martinism and uh, and I heard about this thing called the Treaties of Reintegration and I was like what is this and I think there were some kind of general ritual in there and I was like wow this is amazing and so I I tried and tried to study this very obscure, very difficult to find system. Um, and I couldn't find anything. Everything I did find was in French. Nothing was available to English speakers. Um, so we, we really had nothing. Uh, and it was that was a really big challenge. That was frustrating. Uh, and I went that way for, I want to say, 15 years or so. It was about 15 years that I just went through trying to find out something about the Alu Cohen, uh, something about Martinists, uh, other than the very easy to find stuff. Then all of a sudden, something amazing happened. There was a group that popped out and started making available primary sources of Martinism and primarily the Alu Cohen uh, way back in 2018 or so. And then they started uh, on academia.edu they started sharing all this stuff to the public for free um and you know it took a little bit of time to build up an understanding of what i was reading at first it was like some kind of french document that was boring in french and then there was a little english to it um eventually i actually came to value these things very very well um in fact i made a binder full of them here we go <laughs> i got it right here i have so much alu cohen and martinist stuff around me it's crazy i don't have any rituals uh the rituals are hardly available to anyone anywhere anytime if you have them let me know maybe we can chat more about them um but what happened is the catechisms uh came to English uh, Martinists we got them uh, they <laughs> this group in 2018 made all of these writings available that were first in just French and that were only talked about in academic circles um, and then all of a sudden they start becoming more available now if you go to academia.edu and look up the yellow Cohen uh, you'll see that the catechisms which were the primary teaching tools of the Elu Cohen are now fully available, fully translated in English uh, for the first through all of the degrees of the Elu Cohen. It is an amazing, amazing feat. Um, there's really a lot of hours, a lot of work, and a lot of meticulous proofreading and editing that goes into these documents. Um, that they're they're very high quality. Not only do you get uh, in them, you get the French transcription, you get the actual facsimile of the original document. So like if they messed up and you read French very well and you can read these crazy scribblings in French, which I got to tell you, they're not easy to read, uh, even seeing what the French word is. But if you can see it, that's great. You'll have that. And then you'll have an English translation uh, by a team of translators of these folks uh, that is available to you to read. So I printed out, they're all free. So I went out and printed them all up and now I have them all grouped in my nice little Elu Cohen catechism binder. You know, so I have this binder of all of the catechisms of the Elu Cohen. These aren't some individual who wanted to talk about something that they learned from some secondary source and they're like you know what i'm gonna make a catechism no these were actual 
documents from the actual practitioners of this group. Very powerful. Uh, you know, and, and since you can read these, they're all grouped. Now, the problem is, is that a lot of people don't know what you'll read in every one of these translations. There's a very helpful introductory essay called The Grades of the Elucoan. This is one of the most valuable documents that researchers have that are looking into the original Elucoan uh, teachings. Uh, if, if you read this, you're going to read that what happened was originally because the Frenchies, <laughs> I like to call them, uh, they read the French writings and it said, oh, there's an apprentice, there's a companion, there's a master. And then they read them again and it said, oh, that's interesting. There's an apprentice, a companion, and a master. Must be the same thing. It's a three degree system. It's masonry. Not true. There was a apprentice companion and master in one system of thinking which was the pedagogical blue band that martinez absolutely insisted on almost to the day of his death which you'll read in some of our secondary sources that are available now to researchers um which i recently got a hold of and gave me the energy to do this video this is the third time by the way i'm recording it so i can upload it to the page anyway so you'll read about that uh, system, which had the first three seemingly Masonic degrees and an L. Lucoan spin. But then again, you'll read about the Maitre Lu, which is the fourth degree. Uh, then you're going to read about the fifth through eighth degrees. Um, the fifth, sixth, and seventh are the are the teachings that are almost exactly like the first three. They call them the apprentice, the companion, and the master. But they're not uh, these symbolic ones. They are called the... Let's turn to it real quick. I don't want to mess up words. Um, these are called the... Uh, the apprentice Alu, the, or the apprentice Cohen, the companion Cohen, and the master Cohen grades. After that, you have one that's so similar to the fourth degree, uh, which is called the uh, Maitre Lu, um, called the, the Grand Architect. That's the eighth degree. So it goes one, two, three, capping grade, one, two, three, capping grade. Now you're at eight. And then you have nine, 10, 11, capping grade. That There's three caps to the three kind of evolutions of the first teachings amazing amazing stuff you have every one of those catechisms and those academia.edu teachings but not only did they give us these source documents they gave us the and you could get this online i mean everything i'm talking about is available free to you all you have to do is um, open up your eyes and it might be a little bit for the books, but it's way worth it if you're interested in the system rather than going and paying somebody who might give you a certificate of like completion <laughs> like here you go like and and it works sometimes you know you do these computer tests and then all of a sudden you get a certificate of completion you you spend all this time and energy and in these cases a lot of times money and you get a certificate of completion and oh you did well but you learned pretty much nothing um this system is not for those who just want a ready-made thought form that you can incorporate and go this is what i know this is what i am you can't do that it's a constantly evolving system um so there's that anyway there the system was talked about by saint martin i'm so happy this is going to be recorded um the the system was talked about by saint martin and the 10 instructions to the men of desire now like i said at the beginning when i studied martinism these were called the Lyon's Lessons. They're not. These are not the Lyon's Lessons. These are Saint Martin's Ten Instructions Lessons. Uh, to, and this is what they were called. The Instructions for the Temples of the Elucoans Elevated to the Greatest Glory of the Eternal. Now that is not an introductory text. That is 
you've been initiated. You're now in a temple grade. We're going to give you an understanding of what you just went through. This is not, oh, we're going to give you an introductory syllabus and you're going to go through an initiation eventually. People didn't know this stuff. They didn't get this stuff. They went through an actual experience of initiation, uh, which you can YouTube and hear about uh, through some of these translators and teachers. And then they learned what they went through. Then they had the degree that they got to work and understand and do practices about. They didn't do all this stuff, then have a, a capping initiation. They knew nothing. They were people who met the qualifications and they were brought into these groups and they had rather strange things that they did. Uh, tired, hungry, uh, and they were really weird. And so they got to do these things and then learn about the significance of what they meant. So that's what this book is about. Then, after all these people, uh, I think it was like 75 to 100 people in a little bitty city of Bordeaux, they started bouncing out to all these other cities, uh, getting their own lodge, uh, getting their own grand lodge, which you'll read about. And the president of the Society of Martinez de Pasquale, Michelle Nahon's book of the same name, Martinez de Pasquale. Uh, you'll, you're going to hear about all of this in these documents, all of these sources that are now available um, in French, but some of them, like I said, the catechisms in English. So not only did this group translate all of that, they translated the, this is so cool, I'm so happy to show you, they translated the lessons That was weird. Sorry about that, folks. Uh, they translated the Lessons of Lyon. Now, the Lessons of Lyon, these are the real Lessons of Lyon. What are the Lessons of Lyon? The Lessons of Lyon are a group of usually a page or two lectures that were given by those who were the teachers of the Elu Cohen to all the initiates. Uh, they had classes, and when you came to their class, it's kind of like the old ways PowerPoint presentations. They were like, uh, that's what the translators talk about it being. Uh, translated by Alex Bushman and edited with a commentary and footnotes uh, by Paul Edward Rana. Now, this book is a phenomenal accomplishment with over... I'm looking at the lessons. There's 117 lessons, 477 footnotes of commentary throughout the book, and um, instructional diagrams, helpful things, as well as a few other things if you know what you're reading. Um, I, I didn't even know what was sitting in my hands until I was reading a French uh, book by Jean Vavenza, of Jean-Baptiste Wooler Moses RER. There was, <laughs> there was a group that he called the, I always mess this up, Re Rectifique Ecosie uh, Right, the right of rectified Scottish right kind of thing. Um, I don't know, I'm not a historian, I'm just a researcher. But I can look up the word. Um, what happened was Wooler Mose, uh got into masonry at a very young age and started practicing Masonic stuff with some of the biggest Masons out there and all of a sudden was like, man, I don't like the way masonry is going. Similar to how San Martin in the Illuminism period was like, I don't like where education's going. Um, this doesn't seem to be in the spirit of what we did as uh, Masons before, so we're not going there. And that's when he wrote the spirit a uh, spiritual book, really, of errors and truth, um, which sounds like garbage when you're reading it in French because it's just paragraph after paragraph. So it's Saint Martin's writings are really hard to read, but in these writings, they weren't these big old treatises that were written in order to like stump people. These were clarifying teachings. So the lessons of Lyon were written um, and and actually orated in order to uh, teach 
the system of the yellow cohen so in 117 lessons this crew again who did the translation of all of these catechisms got together and did this book uh, it's like $50 out there on, on uh, Lulu. It's a, it's a little costly, but you know what? I mean, the translators are well worth the effort that, that you're going to put in to buy this book. If you're interested in these things at all, I one time bought a book that sits on the shelf. It's an academic book by Brill um, for Valentinian Gnosticism. It's a good 500 pages, $100 book. It was a hundred dollars for that book. One of the most expensive books I've ever bought. Uh, some books are, you know, some of these, uh, if you go out into the Scottish Rite research stuff, you're going to pay sometimes three, four hundred dollars for a book. So if you value this kind of research, this book is a gold mine. Not, not only, like I said, with the large commentary, but the translation of lessons that were not known before. Which, since we're talking about the primary source itself, I wanted to tell you about. So this book was done off of uh, multiple sources, but primarily the French book of Robert Amadou. So Robert Amadou uh, translated the French library with the lessons of Lyon and uh, made it available. So not only that, but there's a lot of joy in this one. Because in Amadou's book, he put some special and this is the first numberings of these writings he put some special writings in there uh in france at the time of the yellow cohen uh joseph pernell de Lier was a archivist of the yellow cohen he has many 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 writings uh that were attributed to him most of which are those catechisms of the of the bibliothèque municipal grenoble um but uh, these writings um, he kept in notebooks and he made them available to students. So part of the writings included these actual meetings, according to Dominic Clambeau, uh, the actual meetings of the Elu Cohen in front of Martinez. So these aren't just secondary students wanting to make their own school. Um, these are actual reports and notes of teachings that came from Martinez. So I'll tell you which ones those are. Um, they're in April of 1776. Uh, 1776, yeah, they could be 1775, but they are either April of 1775 or 1776. They are the numbers uh, of, of writings that were put into Amadou's book that were not available to anyone else in French at that time. He collated them from the library. So when this was given to the translators, they put it now for us in English. So you have in English actual reports of the Elu Cohen. It's amazing. These aren't just uh, people who kind of heard something through the game of telephone. These are actual notes that are taken down and writings by those who were in meetings with Martinez. And that should that should be any kind of um, primary source that you go to is the actual teachings of the people themselves, not scholars who come after the fact with maybe like, uh, you know, a lot of you know me and I've talked to a lot of uh, mystic people. Uh, one of the bishops that I worked under for probably five years was Dr. Uh, Kaiser, and he says that a lot of the uh, a lot of the biblical scholars had their own axe to grind. They had their own point of view that they were trying to perpetuate for their own motives, and they had nothing to do with the teachings of the biblical research that they were doing at the time. So you had to get non-biased scholars that would come in and use primary sources and do lower and upper textual criticism and start to teach these actual teachings of, uh, at that time, Yeshua and Aramaic and the Bible. Same goes for any kind of academic work. You have to go to the primary source. You cannot take anything from the secondary source that's like, yeah, man, this one time I was in Vegas and I got to tell you, whoa, the very best casino that's ever been there is, and thus they say, 
what their own personal interpretation was of their trip to Vegas and one casino with all the lights that they saw. Maybe for them and their disposition, that was the best casino. But if you went to Vegas and you saw all these lights and you were out there in the nighttime, you may not like lights. You might have a light sensitivity. So you go, eh, I don't really like this casino. I like this casino over here. They're more theatrical and they do things that are a lot more entertaining and enjoyable to me. And I feel a lot more joy when I'm over here. So it all goes into perspective of consider your source. If you're thinking and, and taking perspectives of a secondary source, you probably aren't getting the full story. Anyway, these are primary sources. They're available in English for the very first time. And uh, it is a very amazing thing that these people translated this uh, and made it available. We are in the age of information and now about the yellow Cohen, we're in information overload. So as an introductory to these writings, uh, just to let you know, your money won't be wasted if you're into this stuff at all and you're going to learn the catechisms for free you're going to learn all of these teachings which support the catechisms and uh, then you're really going to be ready if called and if so motivated to approach maybe your own group of uh, of initiations like you know maybe you'll get in touch with like these people uh, that are called the Yellow Cohen. You'll Google them, and and they'll they'll be like, "Wow, yeah, you're amazing. Come on and go go party with us or something." I don't know, but what I'm saying is that um, if you're at all interested in this thing, then now you have enough information to actually learn from the primary sources as an uh, English only one language monolingual person. Um, very amazing. We're I am extremely in a debt of gratitude to these individuals for making available teachings that we would never have. And, and let me tell you, there's a lot of work that goes into translation, especially these kind. They give you a facsimile, uh, they give you a French transcription, and then they give you an English translation. Not in the Leon Lessons book, because that would make it like 1,200 pages, but... Um, you, you have that with all of the catechisms. At any rate, uh, that's what I wanted to do is introduce uh, some of these things, some of these teachings, some of these primary sources. Uh, what I think I'll do next video is we'll look at the article, which is fascinating me, in Seven Seals about the women that were introduced into the Yellow Cohen. That is a hot topic right now, not only everywhere, but especially in uh, these initiatic and mystical circles on Facebook and everywhere else. So uh, we'll talk about that. And uh, I'm grateful that you stopped in to watch this video. Hopefully it was informative. Um, I could go through a bunch of stuff uh, and we probably will but I wanted to in the other videos I went over other stuff that I'll probably put in future videos um, but I'm running out of energy and I just wanted to let you know about these books about these sources about these catechisms and about these these amazing enlightened individuals that um, that are pretty much going to shape your worldview from here on out if you're interested. Thanks for stopping by.